Fox 61 News at 10 starts now. It now at 10, two separate. You just prayed that it was not right in front of your house. Now at 10, two separate shootings in Hamden, both unrelated and happening only 30 minutes apart. The full details of what happened and how neighbors are reacting. Plus, fire crews spent the morning battling flames at a local Harford business. How serious the damages are and the number of people affected. And a moment, people in the capital city have been waiting months for the turnout for the second annual Domingo Street Festival. The Fox 61 News at 10 starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Carmen Chow. Police in Hamden are investigating two shootings that happened last night on Butler and Warner Streets. Here's a look at how close those two streets are. Police say a 37 year old woman was shot while inside her home around 10 at night and then a half hour later, police responded to a 39 year old man critically injured just blocks away. Fox 61's Tony Black is live outside of the Hamden Police Department after speaking with the woman's husband and neighbors on this violence. Tony. Yeah, Carmen, two separate shootings here in Hamden Saturday night has neighbors wanting better for their community. An innocent woman was shot while inside her home, and those we spoke with say that ultimately this is a community thing and that the safety of home is not always that safe. This neighborhood was never like this. This isn't the neighborhood I grew up with. The Hamden community is faced with more gun violence after a 37 year old woman and a 39 year old man were shot within an hour of each other Saturday night. Police first responded to Butler Street where the woman was shot while in her living room. A bullet went through the home and hit her shoulder. Police don't believe she was the intended target. Her husband told us he was napping in the bedroom when he heard nearly 10 shots. His wife then ran in screaming call 911. He tells us she had had to undergo surgery Sunday to remove the bullet from her shoulder. 30 minutes later, police responded to Warner Street, about a mile away, where they found a 39-year-old man critically injured after being shot multiple times. Joe Winters lives down the street from where it happened. I was in the basement watching television. Um, things were winding down at about quarter after 10, and I heard six to eight shots. We have a lot of fireworks go off in this neighborhood, and I was like, it didn't quite sound like fireworks and in my heart you knew what it was. You just prayed that it was not right in front of your house or on your street. Winters has lived here for 10 years and says the standards of the street have lowered. He grew up where the other shooting happened Saturday and says it's not American to have to live in fear. If you're not safe at home, if you're not safe at school, churches, the grocery store, how could anybody live? He wants Hamden to be better and says it and his neighbors deserve it. We need some community involvement. We need to reinvest in our community. And that starts with us, the residents, but also the people who govern us and the people who come to work in this area. We all need to work together. Winter says there has to be more emphasis on community and building relationships with those you live by. He says there's no need to be a stranger because it takes a whole community to do better. Anyone with information on either of those shootings is asked to reach out to Hamden Police. Live in Hamden, Tony Black, Fox 61 News. Just glad that woman is doing OK. Thanks, Tony. And turning now to the weather watch, some of you might be seeing rain in your area right now and certain spots could be heavier or lighter than others. Let's toss it over to meteorologist Ryan Breton. Hey, Ryan. Hi, Carmen. Hi, everybody. There's one area of really heavy rain actually that's moving in right now. A severe thunderstorm warning just got issued for Long Island and the sound will be clipped by this as it moves in. Much of the rest of Connecticut, though, is dry at the moment. But let's take you right into this severe thunderstorm. There there is some hail on Long Island and it's clipping parts of Fairfield County. It's moving at a pretty good pace too, so it'll be heading into New Haven County pretty quickly. The severe thunderstorm warning does not include Fairfield County, but you see all the heavy rain that's moving through there. Put the tracker on this to give you an idea of the timing of it. It'll be getting into New Haven as we get toward 1030 and then Brantford about 1035 and Guilford as we get closer to 1045. This is really the last batch of truly heavy rain that will be contained ending with tonight and it's more favoring the southern part of our area along the shoreline. So some of you may have some thunder and lightning in the next couple of hours. Overnight with the clouds that are out there, it doesn't cool off as much. Temperatures dropping into the 50s. And then for our Monday, we actually have a good looking day, a mostly sunny sky, a little bit breezy. Temperatures getting up into the lower 70s and maybe an isolated shower that pops up tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk about the rest of the week, plus the latest on the tropics coming up in just a little while. Carmen. 
Ryan, thank you. Harford firefighters spending much of the morning battling a large fire that has put two businesses on pause and four people had to be relocated. Take a look at this. This was the scene on Park Street early this morning. That's the location of King's Package Store, MVP Barber Shop in two apartments. Thankfully, no one was injured and police are still investigating the cause of the fire. And staying in Harford, an early morning shooting has sent one person to the hospital. It happened on Weathersfield Avenue. Police say they arrived after reports of gunshots and later a man in his 20s showed up at a local hospital with gunshot wounds. He's expected to be OK. Officials are still investigating. Domingo Harford held their second open street festival today. Miles of Park Street in Harford was transformed into a car free zone so people could freely explore the streets staged with tons of local vendors. In partnership with Harford Healthcare, the event had tons of family games like cornhole, jump ropes, hula hoops, and more. With local food and music, families could enjoy some live dance classes in the street as well. The event allowed people to roam the streets, get some exercise, and enjoy connecting with people in the city of Hartford. Organizers hope it will become a tradition. It's actually based off of Ciclovia, which is um, an open streets program that started in Bogota, Colombia. Um, and they actually do it every Sunday for the entire year. They shut down miles of streets so that people can get out, be physically active, and support local businesses. So the city of Harvard wants to model off of that. Hopefully this is something that we do for years to come. The last event in June had around 5,000 participants. Organizers are hoping for an even better turnout in the events to come. The next event for Domingo will be on October 23rd, where Main Street will be closed for cars so people can enjoy more vendors and activities. Showing support for our first responders, the 8th annual Believe 208 Run for the Brave and Finest kicked off this morning in East Hartford in memory of East Hartford Police Officer Paul Buchanan. Officer Buchanan struggled with depression and died by suicide in 2013. Since his death, his wife and others made it a mission to organize this event every year to raise awareness for police officer mental health. Paul wrote us a note to our family and he said, make my death an issue and help others that are like me. So here we are, my family and I, we put this event together with the help of everybody, all our volunteers and supporters, and we do this every year in his memory and in memory of all our first responders. Proceeds from today's race will help to fund education, training efforts, and provide resources to first responders and families in need. Now to a follow-up story out of Beacon Falls. The man found dead near the town's train station has been identified as 64-year-old Richard Terhoniak of New Haven. He was declared missing in late July. Police believe he suffered a medical episode leading to his death, and they want to thank the public for helping to identify him. A tragic accident late last night. A man died after driving his car into the Saybrook Point Marina. The 74-year-old identified as Stephen Mark Wall was pronounced dead despite the heroic efforts of bystanders who jumped into the water to bring him back to shore. It is still unknown what caused Wall to drive into the water. And Meriden today, North Broad Street was temporarily closed after a driver crashed into a pole. Here's a look at that scene from earlier this morning. No word yet and who was involved in the crash or how it happened. The crash did, however, knock down some wires.